Good afternoon to one and all present here and welcome to a keynote session of the International Conference on Artificial Intelligence and Energy Systems 2021. Rindes was for scholars and researchers across the world to share their knowledge. Being now in an era where various disciplines of science and technologies have no longer boundaries, AIES 2021 is an initiative of SDCEP to promote, cultivate, and enhance research for human betterment. The keynote speaker for this session is Professor Marius M. Ballas of Oral Lyco University of Arad, Romania. May I request Dr. Adrian P., Associate Professor, Department of Electronics and Communication, to introduce the speaker. Thank you, Shilpa. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to St. Joseph's College of Engineering and Technology once again. It's my pleasant duty and honor to bid you all a genial welcome. We have uh, convened electronically today for the fifth keynote lecture at uh, St. Joseph's, which is part of the International Conference on Artificial Intelligence and Energy Systems. Uh, the title of this keynote is Greenhouses as uh, Intelligent Energetic Success. It aligns to the major theme of this web conclave, which itself is energy efficient system for human empowerment. For this, uh, we have with an immaculate choice of tutor, Professor Marius M. Ballas. Professor Ballas holds a PhD in Applied Electronics and Telecommunications from the Polytechna University of uh, Tamisora, Romania. He is an IEEE senior member, he is the author of uh, four books, 12 book chapters, 83 plus indexed articles, 40 plus papers in other uh, journals and conference proceedings, and seven invention patents. His research areas are electronic circuits, modeling and uh, simulation, adaptive control, intelligent and fuzzy systems of computing and intelligent transportation. The main original concepts introduced by Professor Palasa are the fuzzy interpolative systems, the passive greenhouse, the intelligent rooftop greenhouse, the constant time to collision optimization of the traffic, the imposed distance breaking, the internal model bronze casting, PWM inverter for railway coaches in tropical environments, the rejection of the switching control is effect by phase structure the analysis, the Fermat neuron, etc. It has been mentored for student research challenges awarded by Microsoft Imagine Cup, GDF Suze, etc. A professor has uh, participated in uh, many international conferences as organizer, session chair, and uh, member in many international programs. And currently, Professor Marius Velas is a full professor in the Department of uh, Automatics and Applied Software at the Faculty of Engineering, Oral Lake University of Faraj, Romania. It would be my greatest uh, privilege and honor to welcome Professor Balas to this session. Welcome you, sir. Now, I would want to extend a warm welcome to everyone in the audience uh, who has taken the time and effort to attend this uh, keynote presentation. Welcome you all to this online conclave. Wish you all a great time ahead. And now over to you, Professor Belas, and the floor is all you wish. Thank you. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, my friends. Um, my, uh, my talk will be perhaps a little bit uh, unexpected because um, it's not uh, directly connected to the uh, artificial intelligence um, tools or algorithms, but it's um, it's um, dealing about the condition that the intelligence uh, intelligent systems uh, intelligent energy energy systems should uh, uh, should meet should uh, try to follow. Uh, so I hope you are your. Um, you can um, see my my desktop can you yes uh, we can yeah. see you yes okay so um the 
title of the speech is Greenhouse as Intelligent Energetic Structures. And I added in the last minute uh, a so word. Please yeah. switch on the slide share mode. I'm sorry. Slide show mode, sir. Could you please switch on the slide show mode? Give a presentation. Presentation. Yes, do, you you cannot see. Yeah, we can see. Could you please start slide sharing option? Slide show. I did. Slide, slide show. Ah, yeah. Now it's perfect. Sir. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, I I was uh, beginning. So I added um, a word here: synergies. Well. First um, point will will be uh, about the nature's intelligence. Then um, we will talk about renewable energies and passive greenhouses. About um, more details about greenhouses, which are in these days um, proving a, um, an exponential um, development. Then about another concept, which is very much connected to the smart cities, um, the uh, urban agriculture and uh, integrated um, rooftop greenhouses. And then um, we will focus on uh, those uh, in, uh, rooftop greenhouses, intelligent rooftop greenhouses. And then um, other chapters until the final discussion, will, which will be uh, which will be, I think, uh, um, interesting. Uh, so, about the nature's intelligence. Um, the nature seems to be, and uh, I think it is intelligent in, in many aspects, in most aspects. And we have um, uh, two choices. Uh, to take inspiration from nature, or to create a totally artificial concepts. In electronics, analog circuits are rather inspired by nature, but um, the Boolean uh, algebra and, and the digital uh, circuits are not defined in, in nature, um, at least according to my knowledge. Um, just a second, I want to record or, or you record this okay it's not in, so important so since energy we are talking about energy energy is an essential property of the matter and uh, all physical phenomena consists in transformation or accumulation of energy so the the nature inspired energy systems have good chances of success I, I, my knowledge, it's very poor in, in, in um, energy systems that are totally different from, uh, from nature. Um, although they cannot be, uh, they can exist. Uh, in energy systems, one can embed intelligence, either proper intelligence or only emulated intelligence by different methods. And today I, I choose to discuss to discuss about the basic one, about to create and use and impose synergies. Now here I give you a definition of synergy according to Wikipedia. Synergy is an interaction or a cooperation given rise to a whole that is greater than the simple sum of its parts. Um, so um, well, interesting. Um, synergetic systems are easily controllable and highly efficient. I, I uh, make now a parenthesis. I get aware of this, um, of this, uh, uh, the importance of these synergies when I was uh, working on some uh, uh, planned, some planners for planned control systems. Um, so I was working to, I was trying to, to make a new uh, breaking, uh, breaking algorithm for uh, railway coaches, for instance. And then I realized after uh, some simulations that if my planner is, accord, is, a, is um, 
matching the natural um, the natural way of breaking of my favorite coaches, then the whole system was very easy to control and um, any any almost any kind of uh, algorithm were doable or feasible. While if I was asking uh, unrealistic things to the systems in different moments, they were accumulating a lot of uh, errors integrated and it was not okay. And most, uh, most important in, in uh, uh, newer days, uh, energy systems, uh, there are usually there are different uh, sources of energies and they must interact in a, in a positive way. They must uh, realize uh, synergy. Then the, the intelligence will, uh, will, will act uh, easily and with success. Now, renewable energies and passive greenhouses. I think um, we, we could attach to the renewable energies um, an adjective like smart, perhaps not necessarily intelligent, but at least smart. Why? Because they don't cost and um, they are uh, renewable. They, uh, well, they are, they, we are not in danger to, to lose uh, the sun, uh, the wind, uh, or the um, geothermal energy, I hope. And um, they don't create so much pollution, uh, global warming, and um, other problems like the, con like the uh, conventional technology we have used many times ago, or from many times ago, from at least 300 years ago. So you see, um, in, um, in modern, um, in a modern approach, um, industry is leading. Um, we have to produce, we have to, uh, to, in, to grow our economies. And after such, um, such um, years um, in which we burned um, the fuels, you know, the, the um, conventional fuels, coal, gas, uh, oil, uh, we accumulated pollution, we, uh, our, uh, our climate is changing and um, there are other problems, alimentation diseases, um, water crisis, which should be, should be settled somehow. Now, my view, my personal view, is that the uh, um, most important way, the most important tool towards our future is the greenhouse. Well, a greenhouse is building, um, uh, is a building where plants are cultivated under controlled conditions. They offer high productivity and remove much of the risks. Um, one on same surfaces, a greenhouse can fit time, 10 times, perhaps five, 10 times more people than open field cultures. I was um, aware of, I was uh, um, reading about the surface that was needed for a person to live in different, um, in different uh, um, eras. And when people were hunters, gatherers, um, they had the, they had the, they needed at least 10 or, or 15 hectares of, uh, of uh, forest around them to live. Then um, when agriculture occurred, then this surface was um, uh, continuously diminished. And now from perhaps uh, it's about uh, one hectare and a half or two hectares 
and um, uh, each person of the world uh, have uh, have to use have to have to, to dispose so uh, such uh, such that can, uh, they can live um, um, a normal life uh, but our future is bounded our resources diminish and uh, our population is increasing. So this is the, the um, fundamental, the strategic resource greenhouse, the greenhouse. Well, there are many, um, uh, there are obstacles, you see, investment costs, infrastructure costs, pipes, wires, for water, electricity, gas, and energy costs of heating and co or cooling system uh, or cooling energy. Now, and renewable energy is uh, is um, solving the first problem, the cost of energy. Yes, but uh, it, at its turn, renewable energy has some uh, investment costs. Um, and on the other side, the, the, the uh, renewable energy systems are hardly controllable. Now, for instance, the wind and the sun are not uh, reliable. Uh, well, on the, on the other side, the uh, geothermal energy is too constant, too rigid. It's, it's difficult, it's, more, it's not very easy to adapt, to tune the geothermal energy to the our needs. Now, these systems are now emerging, but they, they are not, perhaps they are not yet influencing our lives as they could, as they are, uh, their potential um, could help us. So that is synergies must be observed and must, must be grown, cultivated, looked for. Now, synergic, synergic approaches about renewable energy uh, are, for instance, the following. In situ use of solar, wind, and geothermal energy. So no grid conversion. We, um, if we are using these energies uh, just in a greenhouse or, or for our home um, and not uh, not sell it not try to sell it or or to connect it uh, in the grid then it's it's easier it's it's more profitable um, now there is another concept uh, a very very nice concept a very useful concept which were uh, which you, uh, emerged in germany uh, at the beginning of our millennium which is called water g water g what what means water g? It, it's mean it, it's meaning that uh, the energy uh, management can be merged, can be combined with the motor, uh, with the water management, and um, water can then um, can become an agent for the energy, and uh, uh, such uh, systems are are very effective. I will give you some examples uh, um, a little bit later. Um, now, another, another um, um, synergy, which I think it's essential for our future, it, it's the symbiosis be between humans and plants. Greenhouses can, are able to, to create such symbiosis. We could live surrounded by plants, but uh, the plants will be not there around us. They will surround us, but they will be on the top of our building, on the top of the roof. Um, that is very, uh, that will be very effective. Uh, so uh, making such a system intelligent is not difficult and will bring a lot of uh, advantages. Now about smart control and uh, about Internet of Things, you are, I think, much better than me. 
And um, I know India, it's a, it's a very important uh, um, research um, agent in the Internet of Things matter, intercommunications, remote control, anything, you know. So here yeah, it's the, uh, in our initial concept, which were was begin to be studied in in 2004, the passive energetic greenhouse. Not we will call it passive greenhouse, which has a as main uh, uh, device a heat pump. Heat pumps are, you know, them are increasingly uh, used, but uh, this heat pump, hey, well. This heat pump, it's okay. It's it's it's, uh, it's uh, extracting uh, ge uh, geothermal energy, but it, it needs uh, um, re recirculation of water, and this recirculation is uh, supposed to be uh, ensured by uh, solar panels and wind generation generators. So this means that this. Passive greenhouses doesn't need any kind of infrastructure connections, and it can be installed virtually anywhere in the earth on the earth where we dispose of water, of um, uh, aquifers perhaps. Even uh, artificial aquifers can be used, as you will see in short time. Now. Uh, Passive greenhouses are using only renewable energy. They are free of, con of conventional energy and they can be installed anywhere. So we can uh, move them in remote areas where, uh, which are not very good for us uh, to live. I, the, perhaps the best example here, it's the, it's the desert, um, you know, on artificial soils, on, on uh, sand. Plants are growing very well in, in uh, uh, under uh, greenhouses. So you imagine that in in um, in the future, perhaps Sahara or other deserts will become our our providers from uh, for uh, vegetables. Now the investment costs are still high, but we have uh, one we can apply to solution. Uh, to a solution, to two solutions at least, for to reduce this invest, investment cost. So first, optimization of the structure by mathematical and computer in, uh, computer modeling. We can optimize, for instance, the um, thickness of the walls, and so their price according to the necessities. If we have a good model, and then smart. Algorithms are called now uh, to to improve, to reduce the cost, and to improve efficiency. Uh, efficiency. Our choice, law, uh, I would say, even uh, long life choice, is the fuzzy logic, which is uh, very good in in uh, such uh, in such uh, applications because it's. It can deal with perceptions and uh, with complex with complex systems. Uh, fuzzy logic doesn't need a very accurate and a very uh, comprehensive model of the plant to be very effective. So, in time, we developed uh, such uh, models for greenhouses, which were used to other uh, other other intelligent operations. Uh, one of them could be. Let's think, for instance, um, to diagnose poss uh, possible uh, possible failures. Now, if uh, if our model, uh, which is provided with, uh, which is fed with uh, the real data of the greenhouse, is uh, is producing another output, another temperature, we can um, than the real one. We can guess, for instance, that there are some some um, broken uh, walls, and go there and, and fix them. But uh, the the 
Our study were, uh, studies uh, began, as I told you, in 2004 uh, at, in France, at Toulon, where they had the um, experimental greenhouse, uh, greenhouse, which is even today on the net. Uh, you can access it and, and um, the data provided are, are, are disposable. And you see here some, uh, some uh, uh, pictures of uh, of the internet site, and then here it's uh, come some pictures of the real uh, of the greenhouse. Um, well, the idea is that all the model or or first model that we used was uh, validated by uh, by the data collected during more than ten years. So it had the, it had the, um, it was successful. Now, but the greenhouse mathematical model, this is the model, it's simple. And um, I will, I think it's, it's, it, it's easy to understand, it's not complicated. You can see um, here, it's um, how we, uh, how we, um, uh, <clears throat> which is the term identify the effect of the wind over this greenhouse and um, such such papers are uh, available in different uh, journals here are some data and uh, you see here the um, a, compar a comparison between the, green, the real greenhouse and the model. We can tune the model uh, as we want. And then we use the model to, to, as I told you, to different operations, which were all of them reducing either, um, either uh, the energy consumption or the price. Now, uh, this, uh, this um, approach have the, have the power, have the potential to change the face of the world. Here you see um, a, a sustainable um, agricultural system can be built on greenhouses. You see here um, a valley, which is uh, in Italy, um, here it's a uh, highway, it's Aut Autostrada dei Fiori. And here are, uh, here are two, well, it's a valley, it's a mountain full covered with, uh, with uh, greenhouses. Uh, these greenhouses are producing flowers for San Remo. San Remo, it's a resort at the seas, at the Mediterranean, uh, Mediterranean, Mediterranean Sea. And you see here, um, they are not buying flowers from Holland, they are producing their own flowers, uh, five kilometer, uh, kilometers distance in a valley which is covered, which is ugly, which is sacrificed. But uh, the, uh, the rest of the region, uh, it's very nice instead. So the greenhouses um, have the potential to reconstruct the whole environment. They will, um, they, they, you see here, this, um, this slide is showing, showing you some data about the global warming and about uh, uh, the concentration of carbon dioxide in the air. So uh, it's, it, obvious why this, uh, this concentration indeed increased so much. But uh, you see, greenhouses have the potential to, to increase the density of plants. Plants are coming with, they are consuming carbon dioxide and producing oxygen. So this is a natural agent against, uh, against uh, global heating. Now, oh. Um, let's see, energy costs, 
and uh, carbon offset. So there are at least two major, uh, two major effects that could be touched if we used largely, more largely than today, the greenhouses. Now about uh, feeding the population. You know about uh, that, uh, those trophic levels, plants, animals, humans, it's a pyramid with a very, very large base because animals are consuming a lot of plants and humans are consuming animals. Now in India, uh, I appreciate a lot the Indian style. Your, many of Indians are vegetarian. So I think this habit, um, this feeding habit should be followed by the rest of the world and the future could be um, very secure if we will eat mostly plants cultivated in, in uh, greenhouses. So here you can read, there are some facts that I, I already talk about, about uh, installing them in deserts, um, and you see, if uh, if we can um, liberate such uh, surfaces, such large air surfaces, these surfaces can be turned into natural environments that will improve the uh, the health of our planet and all of ourselves in the end. So let's let's step. To the second, to the next uh, chapter, because the time is not is not very merciful. Um, I, I I was I want to present you some uh, recently or say twenty years old concepts in the in the field of greenhouses. There is a, a huge uh, uh, offer, and the, the technology is all there for us. We must just conceive, we must, we, 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 might, we must have concepts to use them. The technology is available already. Now look here, it's the closed greenhouse, which has, it's closed, it has, it, originally it has a, a tower to, uh, to condensate the water, and this greenhouse was recirculating water. Here are some, some water tanks, but it was recirculating water, as, uh, so it can be installed in, in desert. Nowadays, these towers uh, disappeared and they, uh, one can use liquid desiccants. But this technology is available at uh, uh, WaterG, the WaterG concern in Germany. Um, here, uh, there is a main uh, concept which is um, applied in Holland. Um, well, no, they are, they, they are the living power in the greenhouse industry. And nowadays you cannot, it's not possible to buy a uh, um, new greenhouse, so let's say an industrial greenhouse, unless it's not provided with cogeneration. So cogeneration means that we have a, a gas, still a gas engine, which is producing electricity and you can sell electricity to the system. And at the same time, in the same time, it's producing heating for the plants in the greenhouse. And you add to this another synergic fact, um, burning gas produce carbon dioxide, which is for plants, it's, it's a fertilizer. So it, this combination, it's very effective and it's already in use for many years, uh, it's uh, promoted by the Venlo uh, Corporation in, in, in uh, Holland. Here are some, some, um, some models, greenhouse models. Here is the, those uh, Dutch uh, greenhouses, Venlo greenhouses, very solid uh, steel and uh, glass, and uh, they resist even to typhoons. Here you see the vertical greenhouse. Such vertical greenhouse uh, appeared in, uh, they were studied for a long time, but they appeared successfully in Singapore uh, five years ago. So they are producing fresh vegetables 
in the middle, in the heart of Singapore. The plants are uh, uh, conveying like this, and they are accessing the sun, and not all, not all, all of them at the same time. But the surface occupied by these greenhouses is very small. Photovoltaic greenhouses, here, um, well, here they are um, with the panels, which is an old obsolete solution because nowadays people are rather trying to, um, to avoid these panels because they are shading the plants. And you see here a system, which is again, again from Holland, from Professor Van, uh, uh, Gerrit van Straten. It's, um, you profile the walls of the, of the greenhouse in a um, Fresnel lens uh, shape. And these lens are uh, focusing the, only the infrared energy, which is heating the greenhouse, overheating it. And this energy is collected by small, uh, by small uh, photocells, not by panels. And this is um, leaving uh, the place for, uh, for the other uh, 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 length waves of radiation for the plants. So it's better. And you see here lead greenhouses, which are providing the necessary uh, light, which is filtered by the walls um, to the plants. And here it's, uh, as I told you uh, before, uh, it's an application uh, of the uh, artificial um, aquifer. See, uh, aquifer, this, are, this is full with pebbles and with water. And water, it's, um, it's of course, um, in layers, cold, medium, warm waters. And you can exploit them with the, what uh, with the, uh, with heat pumps, and uh, you can uh, you can um, uh, add here uh, to, to 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 produce a bioreactor to add to the dried uh, parts of the plants here to uh, to create gas, and here uh, there is a liquefied gas uh, tank and so on. So this this integrated greenhouse is able to provide all the energy needed uh, even for the for the offices and for the buildings of the of the uh, people working here so this is something which could be applied on the other planet no no, no need of any infrastructure this um, 50 hex greenhouse it's very secret. I don't know exactly. I could only see a paper which uh, appeared uh, 10 years, 15 years ago in Saudi Arabia. And then, uh, well, it's, it's uh, rather secret, but uh, this much I could find. Uh, and here it's our view on this kind of energy systems and, and uh, um, not only energy, uh, integrated systems. It's about, it, it was a project which was applied to the European Union, but it failed. Uh, we will look in the future for other opportunities. But this project called Glasses was meaning to turn Sahara into a vegetable garden. You see here, it's Sahara, it's sand in South Morocco. Morocco. And here it's the water of it's the ocean, Atlantic Ocean, and the the uh, well the greenhouse. Uh, the, there was a special greenhouse which uh, was um, uh, desalinated the um, the sea water, so it was producing um, water for plants and even for aquaponi. So you know what the new the new concept in his in this field is the aquapony. So you are growing plants on water, but uh, the water is also uh, populated with fish. So there is another symbiosis: plants, fish, which is very effective. And I will just tell you an effect. Uh, instead of um, having to change. Um, 
the water after each um, crop as it's uh, in the now this hydroponic uh, here perhaps you can you need to change this water only one times per year because the fish are uh, consuming the left left of, of the plants and vice versa here it's um, uh, another um, idea which I had and uh, we were talking about with uh, Waterji and who knows perhaps in the, in the in the future it will be used applied it's about uh, greenhouse but it could be applied to home or house for us or too it's about um, splitting the uh, the water in two tanks surface and underground and usually between underground and surface there are differences sometimes very significant differences of temperature and in such a way we could um, we could increase the efficiency of the heat pumps and we could apply uh, we could uh, turn into our, our advantage these um, these uh, differences now another very 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 important point for our future it is urban agriculture and integrated uh, rooftop greenhouses well india india population is growing um, but india is not an exception many many regions the population is growing and uh, it's growing especially in the cities and uh, the cities stole a lot of surface from from the environment uh, uh, deforestations or, or, or uh, building on, on agricultural uh, terrains has reduced a lot the resources, the agricultural resources. And uh, nowadays, even the global heating, it's, it's, uh, it's, um, it's developing the crisis. Uh, you know about, uh, you heard about uh, the UN framework convention on climate change uh, of Paris in two, 2015. And uh, one of the ways in which we can apply, we can try to apply those, uh, those ideas is to the urban agriculture, to, to introduce agriculture in, the, in our cities, which is, an, uh, is hmm, a smart idea. Uh, well, uh, but uh, in usual cities, you don't have enough surface to do this. It's rather decoration, decorative plants that we prefer. But uh, there is another concept called building integrated ag agriculture. And this building in integrated agriculture, uh, again, I don't like it too much because I like plants, but being surrounded physically by plants, it's, um, it's cumbersome. It's, it's not, um, we have no place to move. Now, the solution, it's the following. Rooftop greenhouse. Look here, it's uh, it's one of the first green, uh, roof uh, greenhouses, which were built uh, in thirties. So this idea is very old, and um, but it, it, it can, I can can testify that it's not popular. I wonder if any one of you have ever seen a rooftop greenhouse. I saw some of very few, in rather in universities. So why that? Uh, because uh, it's difficult, it's expensive, you have to modify the rooftop, and uh, in the end, uh, people like this, but don't pay for this, you know? And um, still, uh, growing plants on, or making agriculture, uh, on our roofs, it's it's uh, it would be a huge resource because 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 it will turn our um, agriculture conventional agriculture which a, which is a kind of two dimensional in fields in parts it will turn in a three D uh, structure three dimensional structure you see that for us is a three D dimensional uh, dimension uh, structure because plants are uh, 
trees at all, and they are producing much more oxygen and and uh, consuming much more carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide than the, um, compared to the uh, conventional agriculture. So this concept need a trick, need need a um, genial, well, genial. It's a wise and intelligent. Uh, improvement and this is already done you see here uh, the solution is to integrate the the greenhouse the rooftop greenhouse with the um, underneath building so the idea is like this plants are consuming co2 and uh, producing O2. Uh, so roof is giving us oxygen and we have to collect it or so we don't have to waste it in the atmosphere, but we have to, to uh, direct this oxygen towards the building. At the same time, the building is producing uh, carbon dioxide, which will be di directed to the, uh, to the greenhouse, to the rooftop greenhouse. So this, Operation is artificial. It can be natural. There are natural uh, integrated rooftop greenhouses. But if we want to full to take full advantage of this uh, of this uh, concept, we will have to make it uh, controllable and intelligent. So you will see in the next slide we will introduce the intelligent rooftop greenhouse concept. Now. This only by integrating in the integrating uh, rooftops, roof, rooftop greenhouses with the building, we can improve a lot the building metabolism, and we can create that symbiosis with the plants. Although plants are um, above us, uh, because these uh, artificial circulatory uh, air flows, they are like between us, okay? So they, their presence is there by, by the oxygen which they are producing. Such, a, such an integrated greenhouse prototype exists in Barcelona in Spain. Here it's the picture of the building. Here are four greenhouses. They are on the roof, as you see. And this is an atrium. This is a, an open, space and the buildings, the, the offices are, are, the laboratories are there, three levels. And this building was modeled by us and we were working on it, but um, uh, we were prepared to, to, to work harder, but uh, the COVID um, uh, stopped our collaboration so far. Um, now, Intelligent rooftop greenhouses means more than integrated uh, greenhouses because we uh, we can, as in any integrated rooftop greenhouses, to uh, to use uh, to improve the energy, the water, and the gas uh, um, management. But we have this in an active. We, we make this in an active way. The active, active control of energy, water, and air flows. And we can collect the uh, renewable energy uh, energies around us, mostly geothermal, but also sun and wind, and, and create an intelligent uh, rooftop greenhouse, uh, which can be integrated into a smart city. And you see here that there is such a, such a, Concept. It's a little bit. Uh, we have a, a picture of this. This is the the greenhouse, the rooftop greenhouse. This is the actual building, and this is the cellar, the underground part of the system, which is collecting the heat, the energy from uh, from the, uh, the geothermal energy, which can be directed both senses, heat or cool. Now, how much time do I have? Can you tell me? Uh, 
I think um, I, I'll try to 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 finish um, as fast as possible. So you see the. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, so there is five minutes left. Okay. Now, technology about smart home, smart homes. You know, you see those technologies which are available in Romania, in India, anywhere, but not so many people are using them and uh, well they cost a little bit but they are very uh, very nice very useful and this can be also directed towards greenhouses and um, now here it's the model it's a, it's a mathematical, mathematical model of the uh, uh, of this building kind of buildings you see here the equations for the temperatures in the greenhouse in the building and for the concentrations of uh, oxygen, CO2 in the building and in the um, greenhouse. And here it's such a model, simulating model. And here are some, uh, some parts of the model. And here are some simulations which um, show how it's uh, uh, behaving such a system. For instance, if we ha have no communication between greenhouse and building, you see the natural uh, temperature of, of the greenhouse. It's, it has no uh, heating there. It's only uh, relying on sun here, it's the building. But if we are beginning to, to recirculate these air flows, these bi-directional air flows, they are beginning to, to go together, to, to, to close in, in uh, in temperature as well as in uh, in composition of uh, of the air, we could um, test, uh, and we are testing now uh, on such a system uh, some uh, controllers, PID controller. Look here, it's a PID controller in the building, and the greenhouse is left alone. And here it's um, the PID controllers for building and for greenhouse. And here it's the um, it's another um, simulation which is showing the limits, the shortcomings of the PID control controller, which can be uh, which can be replaced, uh, improved with fuzz interpolative controller controllers. Fuzz interpolative control is our main uh, applicative tool, which is in the same time fuzzy, so intelligent, and it's very easy to apply, so it can be applied with lookup tables. In, in this case, three-dimensional lookup tables for a PID, as interpolative controller, and look here how it's behaving such a, such a uh, greenhouse building, greenhouse system. These are the, um, it show how it's working, the gas, um, uh, concentration model. Uh, now about intelligent and adaptive control, the fuzz interpretive control. I will tell you tell you just two words. This is a um, we communicated so far uh, about uh, this fuzzy interpolative control, and um, you can find on that some some data. Uh, the idea is that um, here in a uh, dedicated greenhouse. You can use optimal control because this greenhouse it's it's very steady and very um, well well studied and and um, standardized. By uh, but just imagine that we have a building and a greenhouse, and each building can be different and uh, each greenhouse can be different. So here we will be forced, but it's our pleasure. To use soft computing, so uh, to use uh, other other uh, algorithms such as uh, fuzzy expert uh, control, to uh, which is able to control such plants as uh, greenhouses and especially uh, intelligent greenhouses. Now about uh, this, um, well, you see. I added here some slides, but um, we we'll, we'll don't have the time to, to discuss them deeply. It's not very, uh, nothing new here. 
there are again some simulations. And here is the uh, generic fuzzy PID controller. You see, this is a three dimensional structure network. And in each node, we have either a rule if we take the fuzzy side of the controller or a, a number if you take if we take the uh, up, the lookup table the interpolative lookup table side of this uh, uh, fuzzy pit controller so you 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 write such uh, such uh, uh, rules such um, inference rules you turn them into interpolative networks and you have a a controller which can be discussed and can be um, draw, um, designed even by people who are not aware, they don't know too much about uh, um, control theory, they are, they just know about uh, greenhouses. And uh, this is a fuzzy expert system in such, uh, for such a, such a, uh, an application, uh, relatively easy to, to develop. It's more difficult to have the application. Now, a concept which are aiming and which will collect, will we'll, uh, gather together energy, intelligence, and other resources is the green skyline cities. Uh, if you can imagine a city in which and each house it has a uh, um, greenhouse on the top, then we have a green skyline city. Uh, if all the cities in our uh, world would be green, we'll have green skylines. I think the, the major part of the global heating problem will, could be uh, perhaps not solved, totally solved, but improved a lot. Now, the advantage is of the intelligent rooftop greenhouses are um, exposed here. We have a, a list well, reducing the CO2 footprint, increasing the CO2 um, offset. Renewable energy and rainwater are directly used. They are not uh, injected into the grid network. Grid network uh, so this is reducing the cost. Uh, it creates a friendly urban areas with a lot of plants, new lifestyle. We, we are not used, uh, we, we must not go 50 kilometers or 30 kilometers or 100 to the mountains. We can have some, some freshness uh, um, just uh, uh, over our heads. And we, we are then producing fresh vegetables, flowers, uh, and create jobs and markets. And um, everything is available now on the on the on the market, so nothing spectacular should be should be invented. Now, for instance, some of you will said, "Okay, but the rooftop um, is difficult to install on the greenhouse." But I will tell you, yes, but there are some new technologies in which you don't even need need soil. You can. Uh, Cultivate plants on the racks, and they are very easy, and uh, and uh, they can be installed on on the rooftop without any change of the uh, of the structure of the of the building. And the synergies we are introducing: human plant symbiosis, local exploitation of the renewable energies, air conditioning, new uh, urban visions. Um, smart cities and so on and so on. And here it's the final discussion um, I presented you about. It's uh, uh, there are uh, seven synergies which were communicated in a um, uh, journal in uh, Hungarian Budapest in, uh, in 2014. So first um, synergy, the renewable energy Synergy. What we discussed about a, a 
Well, we, we can consider even the rooftop greenhouse as a as a passive greenhouse because it's not it's supposed not to use external energy from the uh, from the infrastructure. So the renewable energy synergy, the water synergy. So uh, even the roof of this greenhouse can be used to collect rainwaters at least. Okay. So this is um, this is uh, interesting. The water it's a good agent for for managing uh, managing the um, energy and in the same time water it's uh, needed on the plants by the plants. Constructive synergy drilling water wells for the heat pumps is synergetic with the watering of the plants. So we want to uh, we need water to. Uh, to make work uh, the heat pump, but, but the plants need water anyway. So they are friends in this point, they need water. Carbon offset synergy, besides its own carbon offset effect, expanding the uh, um, passive greenhouse surfaces create a supplementary carbon offset thanks to the uh, consequent ecological reconstruction of the unshackled surfaces. That so even uh, even um, indirect efforts can be um, can be observed. If um, if we leave nature alone, it will it will um, uh, reconstruct itself. Tropic, uh, uh, sorry, trophic synergy. The agricultural this agricultural system is directly reinforcing the two trophic level chains. Uh, chain, uh, no. Uh, so we um, we leave the animals in the nature to live their life lives uh, as they were designed to at the beginning. Beginning. Now, two other synergies which are very important for for the uh, for the applicative side, the economical synergy. Uh, Passive greenhouses are already feasible and use available technologies and homologated components which are creating a fast growing market. They have the potential to boost renewable energy markets and to generate a sustainable economic, uh, economic growth. So everything is on the market, but if we will begin to, to construct more greenhouses, this market will, will, um, will enjoy, no? will grow and will, uh, will be healthier. And the fi finally, but not the last one, uh, uh, not uh, the la uh, less important, it's the political synergy. Uh, uh, these greenhouses are conciliating some political goals that seem contradictory uh, so far. So far, economical growing and efficiency, and efficiency, increasing the number of jobs, reducing the carbon footprint, and increasing the carbon offset, improving the quality of life. Uh, structural ecolog and ecological reconstruction of our environment and removing many of the agricultural and alimentation risks. So this is my final slide. Uh, it's a picture that I took some years ago in my garden. It was a very uh, rainy and cold spring. And this was the first sunny day. And the puppies uh, were beginning to open and the bees are coming to to try to survive and you see if you know the bees uh, the bees uh, cannot accept concurrence um, they uh, they are beginning to fight one of them is working on a, on a single flower not both of them and you see what happened what's happening here because of the crisis because of the uh, of the cold and of the famine these bees are working together and, and I had even I had even a four bees picture but it was not well focalized. So that was my presentation. I hope it was not too long and I, I'm expecting your uh, questions. If I mean. Thank you Professor. Now we'll move on to the question and answer session. Participants can either use microphones from your device or make post your queries in the chat box.
Mm. I guess there is any questions in the chat box. So, can I just ask a question, Professor? Yeah. Uh, on comparing all the greenhouses which you have said during the presentation, uh, which do you consider is the most advantageous? Surprise when I was. Uh... And they told me that they are uh, surprised most of those countries were coming from the region, from the tropical region. So it was Mexico, it was Madagascar, uh, and I and they told me that each client, each application is very different, and the greenhouses uh, like. Um, they must be like chameleons. They have to match a lot of different events for a each application. Now, for instance, in India, as, as far as I know, India, in Kerala, in your region, Choose your own, your own 
So then there are many, 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 many successes. In Romania too, that are able to uh, like this any kind of project and to help you perhaps your design. Thank you, Professor. You're welcome. Now we have come to the end of the session. Let me take this opportunity to propose the vote of thanks. It is indeed an honor to have with us today Professor Marius M. Bellas, keynote speaker for this session. I would like to express my sincere thanks and gratitude to Professor Bellas, who has spared his valuable time in spite of his busy schedule to grace this occasion. Professor, today's talk on nature's intelligence, urban agriculture, intelligent rooftop greenhouses, intelligent and adaptive control, green skyline city, were indeed enlightening for us. Thank you, sir. As a token of our appreciation and gratitude, we would like to present a virtual memento to Professor Marius M. Bellas. Thank you, Professor. Once again, I would like to thank our speaker. It was a great pleasure to have Professor Bellas with us today. With this, we are concluding this session. Thank you all. Have a great day ahead.